All right, coming up next, we get to this welterweight bout between Nate Diaz and Neil Magny. Well, DC, this is a true mixed martial artist of the highest order. You've watched the film. Hard for me to see much in terms of glaring weaknesses, and he believes he can react to anything that is thrown his way inside that arc. It's unbelievable because whenever you're trying to prepare for someone, you look for weaknesses. But when you watch this guy, you, nothing jumps off the page. When you think I have to go wrestle him, you realize very quickly that not only can he defend takedowns, he can also go and secure them sure. himself. He's that new breed of fighter that has been doing every discipline from the very start of his career. You know you're looking at a guy that will contend for a championship. And if our fighter meeting on Thursday is any indication, confidence not an issue for this young man coming in here tonight. Well, enjoy him while he's here, folks, because you never know if this will be the last time we see Nate Diaz in the UFC with a fan base really as big as any fighter in the sport. Diaz is back tonight, and we're glad to see him. Stockton, stand up. <laughs> this guy has a cult following. He is one of the most interesting guys in the UFC because he has this sense that he really doesn't care to be here but he also doesn't feel as comfortable anywhere but in the octagon. So it's a love-hate relationship with fighting for Nate Diaz. When he's happiest, when he's best, he's fighting in the UFC. A guy that boxes, unbelievable, but I think it's the attitude of Nate Diaz that has made him into one of the biggest stars that we've ever seen in the octagon. He had a couple of life-changing paydays against Conor McGregor, the win at UFC 196, the majority decision loss at UFC 202. Which to this day he says he won, right? He thinks he won that <laughs> fight. But one thing goes without saying, and I'll say it anyway, when Nate Diaz fights, the world is watching, and that is the case yet again here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. When the action begins, our referee in charge of the Octagon, Dan Mergliata. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, only a professional record of 26 wins, 10 losses. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Denver, Colorado, Neil Magny. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 22 wins, 13 losses. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Stockton, California, presenting an Ultimate Fighter season winner, Nate Diaz! All right, Griffin. I want you to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. I want a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, go back to your corners, come out fighting. well-rounded fighter in this trip. Yeah, he is one of the best fighters in the entire UFC. But in front of him, he has one of the most dangerous fighters across all divisions in the octagon. Because that punch skill he has is so good that you're, un you're in danger the entire time. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by the jump. Really making good use of his reach advantage there with that punch. Well, now 
Now, if you're the opponent, you really got to be careful as Diaz is able to find a home for that right hand yet again. When Diaz starts landing the right hand, you have got to stay firm. You have got to dig your heels in the ground and say, no way you're going to just run me over. Easier said than done when you're facing Nathan Diaz. And he's looking for that left hand, just missed. All right, so one what a rush. Double leg is good. Now he's a tight on triangle. Triangle looks pretty tight, DC. I'm no Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, but maybe not good here. No, it looks like he's getting in deep. Oh! And this might just be a matter of time. The sheer will is, is really remarkable to watch. All right, side control now, DC. When you get side control in a fight, what are you looking for? When I get to the side control of the fight, and I believe this young man should do the same thing, it's secure first. Grab everything in tight. Make sure your elbows are in. Make sure you've got something locked in so your opponent doesn't just squirm away. Punch short punches, but try to make the opponent make a choice. Either he turns back into you, you take your front headlock, or he turns in the opposite direction, you throw your hook in, and you start looking to get a choke off. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. 26 total strikes have landed for Neil Mack. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood with his leg kick. Single collar tie. Oh, nice strike landed there by Diaz. There's no give on that leg kick. Oh, he lands another strike to the body. Really starting to connect on a lot of shots to the midsection. And these will take their toll as this fight goes into the latter rounds. Big punch from the clinch. Oh, big knee. Every time these guys come together, man, you just hear the, the punches and everything landing. Both, both very powerful, very... Yeah, nice very job to stay with it there to complete the takedown. A lot of top pressure being applied here. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's going to be. All right, he's got the hooks in, DC, working off of his back. Now he's going to try to fall off to the side and pull his opponent up on top of him. He is doing a really good job of relaxing, not panicking because he's getting choked. Nicely done. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. He jumps on a headlock. We call this in wrestling just a headlock. And if you're not careful, you can get stuck in an arm triangle. Watch triangle, watch triangle. Now he's okay. Now he's gonna stick. Magni getting absolutely worked from the top here on the wrong end of nearly all of these ground and pound strikes. Big power punch land. Now he gets back to range. Oh, beautiful jab from Nate Diaz. If he gets that weapon going early, could be trouble. Yeah, he starts touching you with the jab over and over again. And then when he starts to let that right hand fly, you start to see real big reactions from his opponent. Oh, you heard him battle the jab. All right, so he gets the takedown late in the round here, DC. We'll see what he can do. Time it perfect. This will leave an impression in the judge's mind. And as his opponent, you need to get back to your feet right away because you can also sway the judges by getting back up to your feet and maybe exploding with one last blur. All right, so he's got the body locked down here, DC, or so it appears. This is not a guy you want anywhere near your back. Working off of his back here. Looks like he may try to hip escape. Five minutes in the book. Yeah. All right, let's take a look back at some of the highlights from those previous five minutes, DC. And uh, no padding, no glove on that foot. No glove, no padding. And look at the hip action when he throws those kicks. He's not only kicking just for feel, he's really trying to damage his opponent. And as the fight goes longer, you will start to see it taking effect. Round two now. Nate Diaz okay, and two. Neil Magny. Let's go fight, guys. That shot is blocked by Magny. Oh, 
Chris boxing here. The right punch followed immediately up by a left. Magny gets caught by that straight punch. That'll get his attention. Yeah, he's mixing it all up. Big kick lands. Magny's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of swell. Oh, single collar tie here. Oh, punches and punches as usual from the Stockton, California native Nate Diaz. Looks pretty sharp here, DC. Oh, shoot. We'll take that one, Kip Lane. Wow. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. If you're the bottom fighter, DC, what do you do? You got to move. You got to shrimp. You got to get off on a hip to try to move your opponent off of you or pull him down to close the space. Thought he's going to attack a triangle choke here. Brilliant submission defense there. All right, right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing. He got his foot on the hip, and now he's throwing up a triangle attempt. He's going to try to move his left arm across to get pressure on the choke. Watch triangle, watch triangle. Now, DC, a lot of options at his disposal from here. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on the ground. Over and over, these guys are doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Oh, reversal here, DC. What a way to switch the position. Fantastic movement by the bottom fighter. Two minutes to go round two. Good fight here, under two to go. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Magnes has got full mount now. Pretty good ground and pound by him here. He told us on Thursday he needed to be more effective in these situations. Oh, you got to watch him attacking submissions. He throws the legs up to try to get a triangle choke here. So inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Good work from the top here by Magni. All right, he's got side control here, DC. You know, he's got a lot of different submissions in his arsenal once this fight gets to the ground. Magni's got the full mount. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity patting. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. Able to land a single ground strike there. 30 seconds to go in round two. Well, any time you are in a ground-fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Oh, Magny's lower jaw very swollen now. Time to bite down on the mouthpiece and move forward. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? Right hand on point. Oh, tags him with the left, so the right hand has been there. Now he goes left hand. When you're able to fight from both sides, you become really dangerous.
Listen, not a bad round, but I need you to stay more active from the bottom. Let's look for those arm bars. All right, next round is underway, and we have seen across the board in the UFC, submission defense go has gotten so good. Certainly that was on full display in the previous round. Yeah, he did a fantastic job of sliding right out of all of those submission attempts. Let's see if he continues to ward off those attempts as we go forward in the fight. Well, that left hand has been there at times, not on that attempt. Magny gets caught with that punch. He'd be wise to get those hands up. All right, so a good series of kicks by him there. He has mixed it up beautifully, I think, on the feet tonight. He is kicking everywhere tonight. He's doing a fantastic job. Oh, man, look at that. Picture perfect. Got some leg. Oh, he's going to attack a triangle choke here. Oh, nice. Now he falls back into the finishing position. Somehow stays in the fight. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in the half guard. Absolutely more offensive options, because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestling stand-up. Get to your knees, post your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hooks. But get to your hands, stand up, fight the hands, break away and escape. But it's so much more free-flowing than a half guard in the side control. Because all you need to do is just get the opponent's body up because his legs are just free to move. His legs are not controlling anything. His legs are just free. So you have more freedom to use yours. Oh, really exploiting his reach advantage as he landed the jab there, DC. Just out of range with that left hook. Timing his shots pretty well here early, DC. He's doing a great job of mixing things up, keeping busy, being very active. And he landed the right hand there. Oh, Magni shot is blocked. How about that? 140 total strikes have now landed for Neil Magni. Striking at a 57% accuracy rate against Nate Diaz. Oh, good head movement there. Nice left. Counters beautifully with a straight punch there. Must be nice to have a reach advantage like that, DC. You can't relate. Double leg kick down attempt here, and that one is true. Nice job there to enter and ultimately plant his opponent on the mat. Now what does he do? That he's got his best shot off, finished the attack. Where does he go now from the top position? All right, so you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. A lot of top pressure being applied here. Fighter trying to pass here, ooh, but gets denied. Gets denied, great job, great recognition of seeing what your opponent was trying to do. Now the guy's got armbar, he's attacking it on him. And attacking armbar. And he's out. All right, looks like he's got a couple hooks in here, DC. And defensively, you better be careful. All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC. But you got to be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. All right, he continues to bully his opponent here, really manhandling him on the ground. Well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. All right, one minute to go in round three. Nice hammer fist. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold, and it's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? Know when to hold him. Know when, when to hold him. Yep, there absolutely. All right, working inside the now open guard of his opponent. Uh-oh. Throwing up a triangle. The guy on his back is very good at submissions, and if he's not careful here, he's going to get stuck, and he will have to submit. That right hand hurt him a little bit. Fifteen seconds to go. 
Back mount now. Ten seconds now to go in the round. That's three rounds in the can. We're headed to the championship rounds. All right, let's take a look back at some of the replays from that last round. Unbelievable to see these high-level competitors get in each other's face, tuck their chin, bite down on the mouth guard, and just let it all hang out over the course of five minutes. All right, listen. All right, hey, gentlemen, grab a seat. Look at me. Look at me. All right. All right, next round is underway, and if you look at these two guys in between rounds, it looks like they've barely broken a sweat, both with good resting heart rate, stamina still very high, and you just have to laud the efforts of these guys in training. Both men certainly noted cardio specialists, but incredible that they would have this much in the tank after 10 plus minutes of fighting. Well, no problem getting inside to land that straight punch. He's got a huge edge in reach, and he made good use of it there. Well, that'll quiet the storm. Shot blocked by Neil Magny. Nice connection there by Nate Diaz. Not a guy you want to let get going here on the feet, DC. No, because it's all downhill with Nate, right? Wow, actually got the takedown. All right, operating inside the closed guard now. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. Bottom fighter trying to control. Nicely done. Pretty good work with the strikes here off of his back by Diaz. Keeping busy here off of his back. Nice offense from the bottom. Side control now. Well, not ideal to spend this much time on the bottom, but you can't fault him for his activity. Landing strikes here from the bottom. Nice work by Diaz. Oh, useful strike on the ground that was. He's putting him in exactly the position he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. We march on three minutes to go. He jumps on a headlock. We call this in wrestling just a headlock. And if you're not careful, you can get stuck in an arm triangle. So he postures up. Now he's okay. Now he can escape. All right, got to be careful playing around inside his guard. Absolutely, John. That's why you don't sit in a full guard. When you sit in a full guard, it gives these guys too many opportunities to chase submissions. And now he's jumping on a triangle. Well, this is exactly the sense of urgency you're looking for. Try to take the judges out of it. He is lighting them up now. Just misses with a left hook there. And he lands a punch there. Pretty good connection by him. Oh! He's hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. Oh, he might be out. And just inches away from landing one of those big right hands. Let's get some offense. Let's get going. Nice job there by Neil Magny to get inside. He has the length, has a great frame for this welterweight division, and he is certainly off to a good start tonight. Man, he's timing his shots nicely. It's like Tom Brady out there. He hasn't missed the target. I mean, you insist on bringing uh -huh. Tom Brady. Stop it. John, stop it. Uh -huh. Big punch lands through the middle. Lands the right hand. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are going to take their toll as this fight goes on. Man, look at the redness now almost immediately on the right side of his body. Just out of range with the straight left hand. If your opponent has you in the clinch, pull it down. Oh! Huge right hand! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh, he might be out.
just missing on the counter there. Big punch land. Oh, tags him with the left. That left hand has been really effective tonight. Single collar tie now. Oh, look at that jab. Snapped his head back. His jab hits the target so fast. Always reaches his hand right back to his face. Take down attempt plate, and it's good. The left hand is true. That will absolutely work. He throws it like a piston back and forth. He's landing that beautiful left hand. Horn sounds for the end of round four. All right, there's the horn indicating the end of the round. So potentially a big factor here, ladies and gentlemen. The cut on the cheek sustained in that round. Certainly better to be below than above the eye, but the cut man's got to get in there and close that thing up. All right, now we check out some of the action from that previous round, DC. How about the display of striking? Just high level. I mean, you would think that we're watching a K-1 level kickboxing match opposed to being in the UFC. Both displayed great technical skills. Unbelievable strike. Fifth and final round. Strong defense there to block the shot. Well, he continues to land a high number of strikes here, just like he did in the previous round. This is a world-class display of striking here tonight. Left hand punch from the clinch. Throwing that jab now again, the fighter of ace. Well, he has certainly found the range and staying pretty busy here on the feet. He's being busy, but it's also the timing and the accuracy that's allowing him to land so many attacks. Again, going back to the jab just out of range. Oh, and he connects there. Pretty nice punch there. Great job finding the range to land those punches. Try to establish that jab. Diaz gets hit with a kick here. That one landed flush. Let's see if he can make some adjustments. Tags him with the left. Oh, nice combination. Really timing his shots nicely. Good tempo, very accurate, finding... Oh! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. He is getting lit up right now, John. Diaz has got a cruise now, starting to appear on the right side of his body. Effective punch there by Magnum. Oh, that's a sharp hook there by Diaz. And he continues to work the body here. Oh, he lands a straight punch there, DC. We'll see if he can follow it up now. He has been throwing the strike over and over again. Look how crisp and straight he is. Takedown defense holds up. Lands a big elbow there. Nice. Knee to the body. And now he's got the tie punch. Big knee land right through the corner's midsection. Diaz gets caught with that punch. Got to shore up the defense here. Oh, that's a good right hand. Magny's attempt there is blocked by the opponent. Wow! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. No! Oh, oh my God! Misses with that big right hand. Huge shots there. Oh, straight right. Continues to mix it up, going to the head. Oh, and there's the double leg takedown for him. Beautiful entry there. Now he sees the triangle. And this could be trouble here. Looks like it's pretty tight. He's trying to work his head out of harm's way. It, it might be over. remain in the fight. Well, you got to be working off of your back. He's certainly doing so here. Nice punch. All right, so 
inside the open guard of his opponent. You gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Well, you know, I don't like the D very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah, no pity pat to this guy. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strikes. Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's going to start looking to land big shots from the top. 20 seconds to go in the fight. Oh, Magnes has got full mount now. Solid strike on the ground. A good ground and pound by him here, certainly staying busy and not just busy but effective. You can just throw punches to keep the referee off of you. This guy is throwing punches to be effective, to throw damaging strikes. He's doing a fantastic job. All right, so the fight goes the distance. We'll take a look back at the action, but should go his way given all he got done in the striking. Game. Yeah, he did a great job of landing at will, mixing up the target, doing everything that he's become known for in order to cruise to a very good decision. I know he didn't get the finish that he wanted so bad coming in here tonight, but he had a phenomenal performance, and he showed that he's one of the best fighters in the world. The official decision is in. It resides with Bruce Buff. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest. 48-47. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision, Neil All right, nice job by him there as he is your winner via unanimous decision. And sometimes I would think it's easier said than done to just leave the judges out of it. Dominant performance and he gets his hand raised. Yeah, and if you gotta go to the judges, leave no question, right? Be the person that is so dominant that you know you're getting your hand raised. He did exactly that tonight and he gets a dominant decision.